Hi guys, Durant the Knight here again and welcome back to the channel. So for today's video, I'm reacting to the top 10 most expensive video game consoles ever. Number 10, Magnavox Odyssey 2. $180 adjusted to $640. I'm up to my eyeballs in a mine shaft with Odyssey 2's new video game, Make Ash Beat. Make Beat, escape up the ladder, smash the boulders. Now, now, grab the music key to The Magnavox Odyssey 2 goes by many names. In Europe, it was the Philips Video Pack G7000, which, may we say, is a very catchy name. In Brazil, it was the Philips Odyssey, and in Japan, it was simply Odyssey 2. Released in 1978 in Europe and 1979 in North America, this console was a direct competitor to the Atari 2600 and the Intellivision. It was also the cheapest option of the three at just $180. We say just, but that is the equivalent of about $650 today. Despite being the cheapest option, it never sold as well as its competitors, and the Odyssey quickly faded into history and obscurity. Number 9. Very weird one, to say the least. Sega Saturn. $400 adjusted to $680. Combining three 32-bit risk processors with five additional processors to create a head-snapping 500,000 polygons per second. The Saturn's launch in North America was an unmitigated disaster. They were massively upstaged by Sony, whose PlayStation was $100 cheaper. Sega had also failed to notify major retailers like Best Buy and Walmart of their surprise release, and KB Toys essentially told Sega to pound sand by refusing to sell the console. Play your games in the 21st century and leave the rest of the world behind. <laughs> the Saturn's premature release also meant that it launched with just six games. Even Freaky. worse, the Saturn's killer app, being Virtua Fighter, was never super popular in North America, so no one really cared. All this combined into a historically disastrous launch, and the Saturn was steamrolled by the PlayStation just four months later. Real painful. Sega. Saturn. Number 8. Atari 5200. $270 adjusted to $720. It lets you freeze the action. Hello, Judy. The new 5200 Super System. Now, if you want to talk about unmitigated disasters, let's talk about the Atari 5200. When it was released in 1982, the Atari 5200 cost $270, which is roughly the equivalent of $720 today. This certainly wasn't unheard of, as most video game consoles at the time were ridiculously expensive, including its famous predecessor. But absolutely no one was paying $720 for this. It was ugly, it didn't have any good games, it wasn't backwards compatible with the 2600, the analog controller was terrible, and it couldn't compete with ColecoVision's library. In short, people were perfectly happy with their 2600, and they were unwilling to fork over the equivalent of $700 for this mess of a console. For 2600 games? Nearly 300 2600 games. Super! System, now with a $30 rebate, and Pac-Man from Atari. Number 7, Fairchild Channel F. $170 adjusted to $770. Play tic-tac-toe, shooting gallery, or just doodle. Switch video carts and play Desert Fox. Switch again, it's Blackjack. Or play the two built-in games, Pro Hockey or Tennis Champ. What is the Fairchild Channel F, you ask? Well, it's a piece of gaming history. This was actually the very first ROM cartridge-based video game console, and it was released throughout North America in November of 1976. The Fairchild Video Entertainment System, just $169.95. Despite its historic status, the Fairchild Channel F was quickly dwarfed by the Atari 2600 when it was released in September 1977. Upon release in 1976, the Channel F, which stands for Channel Fun, was priced at $170, about $770 when adjusted for inflation. It's not a bad price by any means, considering how novel the technology was at the time. That said, it's still a lot of money, as will be proved by our next entry. The home entertainment system that never gets old. Number 6, PlayStation 3. $600 adjusted to $770. See, so that's quite funny, really, because I remember hearing about how expensive it was, and obviously, clearly it was hard to compete with the 360. Even today, obviously, people favor the 360 more than the PS3. Crazy. 
the PS3 disaster proves the importance of an inviting price point. Sony was the ruler of the gaming landscape throughout the sixth generation, as the PS2 was an unprecedented success. And all that came crashing down at E3 2006. And the 60 gigabyte PlayStation 3 for 599 US dollars, 659 dollars Canadian. This was a historically embarrassing showing for Sony, as nearly every facet of the conference was memed and ridiculed. Perhaps worst of all was the price unveiling, which was met by a painfully uncomfortable silence by the palpably disappointed audience. Of course, you could buy the 26GB model for $500, but that $600 60GB model was the only one to feature Wi-Fi capabilities and an HDMI port. Sony's reputation crumbled, and the PS3 suffered a calamitous launch. For a cumulative of 6 million units by the end of our fiscal year on March 31st, 2007. Number 5. Atari 2600. $200 adjusted to 8 See, the thing about that is, like, for me, like, after buying my PS3, it's clear that there are a lot of great games that came out on it, even though it flopped in comparison to 360. You know, like, obviously, like, uh, Uncharted, Infamous, Last of Us, of course, you know. So it's like, there are so many games on there that are great. Just unfortunately, it just didn't work out for everybody, right? $850. It's the video system with classics galore. From space invaders to cars that roar. A real hip joystick that controls the screen. The Atari 2600 is arguably the most iconic video game console in history, yet this beast cost the equivalent of $850 in 1977. That said, the 2600 was an immediate success, and it wasn't until 1980 that it really took off. The new Atari cartridge game is in. Excuse me. <laughs> Uh-oh. George again. That was when Atari licensed Space Invaders, which quickly became the console's killer app. The game instantly doubled Atari sales, and Pac-Man helped even more when it was released in 1982. A significant price reduction must also be credited for the console's success, as it cost just $125 by 1982, or about $335 today. In the end, the Atari 2600 sold approximately 30 million units, making it one of the most successful consoles of its day. It's the new video computer game everyone's talking about, and naturally, it's from Atari. Have you played Atari today? Number 4. Intellivision. $300 adjusted to $900. No, I haven't. $140. In television, PGA Golf. From tee to green, the gameplay is incredibly realistic. Serving as the main competitor to the Atari 2600, Mattel's Intellivision was revealed nationwide in 1980, three years after the release of the 2600. And while that console's price was slowly coming down, the Intellivision launched for an unbelievable $300, about $940 in today's money. That said, it had the power and innovation to back it up. Here, compare for yourself. In television space games from Mattel Electronics. It had a 16-bit microprocessor, downloaded video games, the ability to play back voices, and the first controller to offer directional thumb pads, among other innovations. Regardless, it wasn't nearly as big as the Atari 2600, and it sold just 3 million units throughout the early 80s. Then I compared Atari football with Intellivision. Again, in television, played more like the real game. Number three, 3DO. $700 adjusted to $1,250. The intense realism of Panasonic Real 3DO. Apparently. The 3DO was actually created by EA founder Trip Hawkins and was released in North America in October 1993. This was touted as the most cutting edge and technologically innovative gaming console of its time. And despite being named Time's 1993 Product of the Year, its launch was a messy one indeed. Presenting 3DO, the most advanced home gaming system in the universe. Developers struggled with the technology, the console launched with just one game, and Panasonic, being the first company to produce the 3DO technology, failed to ship enough units to retailers. All that, combined with its egregious $700 price point, was enough to turn away consumers. It sold just 2 million units over its painfully short 27-month life cycle. Wow. Definitely. Cool. The real 3DO system from Panasonic. Yeah. Number 2. Neo Geo. $650. Clearly not great, then. Adjusted to $1,290. Here I am, peoples, just hanging out at the factory where they make these Neo Geo multi-video systems. Now, what these things are is that you can play four different games on this machine. But that's not all. I got another surprise for you. 
The Neo Geo is an interesting console. It was originally released as a cartridge-based arcade machine called the Multi-Video System. However, a home console version was also released. This was called the Advanced Entertainment System, and it had the same raw specs as the arcade machine. This means that it was very, very powerful and very expensive. You wanted more power. Arcade-like four-dimensional graphics and 15-channel stereo sound. It was only available to rent due to its exorbitant cost, but this changed over time due to high demand. When it eventually debuted as the gold system in North America, it cost a staggering $650, just about $1,300 today. Even the games cost upwards of $400 in today's money. Needless to say, it never broke into the mainstream market. You pull your memory card out of the memory card slot, and now the next time I play a Neo Geo game, I continue from where I left off. Number one, Philips CDI. $1,000 adjusted to $1,900. This may look like an ordinary compact disc, but actually, it's an interactive encyclopedia. A stimulating match with a tennis pro. Now, the CDI isn't specifically a video game console. Rather, CDI refers to the data storage format. It served as a cheaper alternative to home computers and provided interactive multimedia content such as web browsing, email access, interactive encyclopedias, and all the features of a CD player. Remember when CDs and emails were all the rage? I... what is... It's the new way to watch movies. You kids like movies. How about movies on CDI? The device eventually became known for its many terrible video games, which were played on interactive CDI discs. The first model for home purchase was the CDI 910-205, which cost upwards of $1,000 at launch, equivalent to nearly $2,000 today. It just goes to show how much cheaper technology has gotten over the intervening 30 years. Hey, want to fight the forces of evil in Korodai? Check it out. It's easy. Maybe it isn't. <laughs> but again, you know, that's just a prime example of a console trying to... You know, to take someone like Mario and Zelda and just plonk it onto their, their console. And it looks terrible, for one. I mean, like, why would you... And plus, why would you then go and play it on there? Especially if you've already played it on there, just to end up having a bad experience. Obviously, you wouldn't know that until you've played it. But, yeah. But, anyway, guys, that is another reaction video. I hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, smash that thumbs up button. It really helps get my video out to more people. Hit the subscribe button if you're new with notifications turned on for my latest videos as and when I upload them. So, thank you very much for watching. <laughs> thank you very much for watching and subscribing. Enjoy the rest of your day, whatever it is you're doing. And as always, guys, till the next video, take care of yourselves.